All right, kids, John Flores here with the BMW Riders Association. And I am gonna be on my maiden voyage on the 2021 BMW R18. I am at Cross Country Power Sports here in New Jersey. And this is it. So recording. It's a long reach to the thing. Okay. Power. Thing swings over. And start. Holy cow, this thing is a shaker. I'm in neutral. I'm gonna put this in roll mode. Holy cow. Handlebars are moving about. Ready to do this? Feel that clutch. All right. And we're off. It's kind of docile actually. First impressions of the motor is that it needs some sound. It does shake from side to side. It's got this, the standard character. Holy cow. It's a wide boy. Wow. I am in roll mode, which is the, uh, in normal BMW talk, is the standard, I guess, either tour or... Holy cow, man. All right. First light. It is easy to flat foot this thing. Really low seat height. Like mega low seat height. And, uh, but man, this is a big boy's bike. I am 5'8". And I find myself needing to stay vertical in order to grab these bars. These bars are wider than shoulder width apart. As you can see at idle, um, I have the display set to displaying the RPM, 10,050 RPM at idle here. Dang, that first turn was weird. Just getting used to a new bike. All right, I'm in first now. Can't stall this thing. Left turn, rock and roll. Woo! Oh, 1800 cc's. I gotta close this so I can hear. Low, third gear, 2500 RPM, 40 miles an hour. And it's got some pull still. Damn. This is, I mean, yeah, you look down and you just see these giant heads, 1800 cc's. Holy cow, man. Let's kick this. Unfortunately, I don't have a scenic route home. We'll have to go to a park and check out some roads or something. I got some ideas. It is a solid piece, though. 
typical BMW fashion, it's like off center, it's pretty light on its feet. Those, that first lean is pretty light. All right. On to the highway. Fourth gear. Just cruising along. I'm staying in the right lane for now. Got to get used to this bike. Don't want to bend it. Six. It's got six gears. All right. This thing had two miles when I left the dealer, so now probably has three and a half. It's got torque, baby. And it vibes. Holy cow. 70 miles an hour, fifth gear. All right, 70 miles an hour, six gear, 2,500 RPM. Do a roll on here. 70, 80. That's pretty quick, man. That's pretty quick. Wow. Yeah, it picks up speed pretty quickly. What a nice motor, man. It's a lot of torque. Kind of doesn't matter. Suspension seems well damped on the highway. Mirrors are good. Not a lot of vibration in the mirrors. Pretty solid. There is some vibration coming through the bars and through the seat through the foot pegs but it's that big old twin vibe you're right none of this uh, not tingly kind of throaty lumpy 1800cc lumpy I mean there's no fairing on this so the wind blast is pretty strong. I'm at 80 miles an hour hitting me right in the chest. 80 is no problem though. Not even struggling. Rolling on. Motor's got a lot of juice. Like I'm in top gear and I don't I mean I don't feel a need to downshift right now. It goes from 70. A little bit of a lag, but once it once it hooks up, it's nice. Damn. Alright, alright. This, this is not the place this bike is built for, obviously. This is not a highway bike without the fairing. I mean, it'll do it, obviously. A 
I've got to lean into the wind a little bit make sure that I'm not pulling on the bars that I'm using my core to lean into the wind and not pulling on the handlebars that will get tired real quickly I'm gonna downshift into fifth and see what the 70 to 80 feels like from fifth so I'm at 28 70 miles an hour 20, 2800 rpm let's go yeah all right yeah it left immediately it's clearly um it's got great torques but when you're in six and do that from 70 miles an hour there's just a little bit of hesitation when you're in fifth and do that at roughly 2800 rpm no hesitation I'm in uh, roll mode, which is not the hyper-aggressive mode, which is rock. So I may have to try that out eventually. Alright, expansion joints. Yeah, I feel it. It's jumping around, for sure. It's, it's stable, but you feel it's not brakes car all right all right so it is uh september and we're still in covid season but as you can tell traffic has picked up um traffic has picked up not as bad as normally you know if this was normal rush hour non-covid um i don't think i would have been moving at all this is a terrible highway it's, it's the traffic starts building up at like 3 30 and then it just gets worse and worse and worse all right setting it to rock mode Eleven miles on this thing, eleven point one. Thirty four miles per gallon, four fifty eight. Decent reach to the rear brake. The brake and the clutch levers have a flat face to them. They're styled as well. They're not your standard brake and clutch levers. They're almost like bladed. By the feels of it, they're where my pointer finger is touching. It's about maybe half an inch, half an inch thick or half an inch tall so it feels more like a blade than uh, than store standard clutch and brake levers feel more like uh, rods that you're that you're touching this feels more like a blade all right Now, they said I'm the second guy to pick this up, second person to pick this up from the dealership. Second press bike. They had 10 of them, I believe, that are going out to journalists in the area. So, I am number two. It is uh, Wednesday. I am actually not permitted to uh, share this riding impression until the embargo is lifted on Friday. 
so you will not see this for a couple of days. So the head check is a little odd. Because I'm leaned over. Maybe because I'm leaned over a bit, I really can't do a full head check. I gotta use the mirrors a little bit more. It does have a reverse gear. And it's kind of old school actually, because the reverse, there, there is a lever behind my left calf. Down here somewhere. That I need to, uh, in order to activate reverse, I need to have it in neutral. And then I need to reach down and and rotate that lever upward. And that's how I would activate. I think that I've missed the exit I wanted to take. Oh well. What's going on here. I'm on autopilot. It's all right. you've ridden BM modern BMWs, you're, you'd be used to the controls. Pretty standard. Things like the menu and the mode buttons are something that you, you would be familiar with. Coming off the lip, no problem. Got some get up. It's got some pickup. All right, I got this big old exit here. Big old jug handle. I haven't really turned this thing at all. I'm gonna take it easy. I have no idea where the limits of the lean angle are. What a this. Yeah, this is a nice motor, this thing. Alright, I am in rock mode. Feel that thing? It's like rumbling. I'll take this, I'll roll this thing through downtown. Yeah. It is enthusiastic. It's So I don't have earplugs in. I have a full face helmet, but a full face helmet. But I don't have earplugs in. The motor isn't no, isn't loud. It's either on the intake or the exhaust side. 
I mean, it rumbles nice. It, there, when you roll on, there's a brrrr. There's that nice. There's a nice rumble to it, but it's not something, it's not obnoxious. It's certainly, it's probably one of those places where I think people are going to make, uh, aftermarket makers are going to make pipes for this thing, release more sound. But that's the, I mean, that's the cruiser life, right? Who? Who runs a cruiser with stock pipes these days? Guys texting. The guy's at a traffic light on a sport bike. It looked like a Ducati. He's at a red light and he's texting. Kids these days. I'm gonna put the. All right, I just turned the high beams on after not having them on the whole trip. Yeah, I'm below 2,000 RPM, and it. It is. Uh, I wouldn't call it happy, but it's. It's tolerating the low RPMs just fine. All right, make sure I don't get killed here at this intersection. Everything's a little oversized here, but not like crazily so. There's a cop. Hope he didn't see me. Ah, this guy's on my tail. It's all right. So let's talk about seating position. So it's like from the hips down, it's kind of like sitting in a chair, right? Your um, your thighs are my thighs at least are more or less uh, horizontal, parallel to the ground, and then uh, and then at the knees they're bent. To go down to the foot pegs it's uh that angle is it's not quite like a chair at 90 degrees right where your knee makes a 90 degree angle it's actually a little tighter than that you know the foot pegs are still in front of you but this seat is uh, pretty low to the deck so it's pretty quashed. If you have a longer inseam, you're going to be even more. That angle is going to be even more because you're. If you're, if you got longer legs your thighs are going to be longer which means that as they extend from your hips forward they're going to be farther forward than mine and then that angle that goes from the knees to the foot pegs will be more extreme now I uh all right there's the foot so I have not, in just this short ride, I have not accidentally touched my boots to the 1800cc heads. 
they have uh, they're kind of tucked in there if I lift my right so right now I have my heel on the um, on the right foot peg if I lift my toe I can feel the bottom of the the bottom of the uh, the head all right so here we're in downtown Somerville the coolest downtown in New Jersey I would say I'm not biased though or yes I am but uh, there are over seven uh, no 45 I think restaurants here downtown and all the a lot of variety Italian obviously because we're in New Jersey to uh, there's Soulville Korean there's Q2 Thai noodles good pizza there's great Cuban seafood you got sushi Italian nice steakhouse too I am going to stop for these folks I'm going to do my loop. This is going to be a long video. What time is it? So this display is a black and white display at the bottom of the uh, the soil sole dial on this bike it is a uh, white white text on black so it doesn't look like a cheesy te Texas Instruments calculator thankfully uh, but it's also got this funky style like I'm looking at the letters rock and it, I'm, I could see the pixels. It's not a high res, it's not a high resolution display. It's uh, so when I look at the K, the angled uh, strokes in the K and the angled R, and even the curve of the O, you can actually see the pixels. Looks, it's got this 8-bit feel to it. Which is kind of funny, actually. Alright. So in this urban environment, this thing is no problem. This suburban downtown environment it's not too noisy I'm not feeling a lot of heat come up from the engine it's not a hot it's not a particularly hot day in the low 70s uh, but I'm not feeling I'm not roasting here So again, I've got a little bit of a forward lean here to reach the bars.
Yeah, this is totally maneuverable in this kind of environment. It doesn't, that's either at a light or even just rolling slowly. It doesn't feel overly heavy or bulky. Now this turning is something I gotta get used to. All right. thing is eager yeah there's nothing here this like this initial lean over there is no resistance to that motion it is pretty much instant I mean it's a long bike so this ain't no sport bike Now, I'm really conscious of these heads dragging down. That power is nice though. I'm gonna have to get used to the limits of this bike. I'm probably too self-conscious about, uh, about the lean angles here. It just, they just look so low. Country road, two lane country road, some nice 30 mile an hour bends. Yeah, it, it leans over nicely. And it's eager to do it too. Again, it feels light on its feet. So shockingly so. It feels low, long, and light. I just did a trip. This is a point of comparison. I just did a trip with a Honda Goldwing. And this thing, ah, hard to say, I think it feels more playful than that Goldwing, a little lighter on its feet than that Goldwing. I also had some seat time on, uh, shout out to Moshe K. Levy. I had a little bit of seat time on his 2015 R1200RT. And, uh, you know, uh, as I told him, those RTs, they, they are always quicker handling than you'd expect them to be. They're always quicker handling than a bike that size has any right to be. This is not quite there in terms of, you know, with that RT, you, you push the bars and it's over. Like, bam! And it's eager. This is pretty close. It, it's, it feels, I think, more playful than the, um, than the Goldwing. I'm going to have to take this as a twisty roads. Twisty ear roads. I haven't felt like I'm in the wrong gear the whole time. It's just like, there it is. 
and it hasn't felt lugged. I've been below 2,000 RPM and it, it doesn't lug. It just pulls. Something something freight train, right? Nice. Fifteen hundred RPM in six gear. Fifteen hundred yard, forty-two miles an hour. I'm gonna roll it on. Oh, it now lugged. All right, there it lugged. Oh, eighteen hundred it lugged. So, roughly under two thousand RPM. Under two thousand RPM, it will lug. It will shake. Uh, And per, it'll shake more than it'll propel, put it that way. But um, I feel as if once you're above 2,000, thereabouts, it'll pull. There's a little bit of, uh, it's clearly not at the top of its torque curve. Well, it'll pull, um, and then as it climbs, you'll feel the power come on. So there's a little, little bit of a delay. All right, so now we're on this, I know this to be a relatively bumpy road, as you can see the gold wing ahead of me. I, I uh, ride this road often on my bicycle, and it's uh, one of those roads that's bumpier than it looks. All right, so this bike is doing all right. I mean, it's not a magic carpet ride here. Uh, you will feel the... Uh, you do feel the bumps. You do feel when the suspension is at, the, at its limit. The front's doing a pretty good job. I think the rear... Feel the hits on the rear a little bit more. Yeah, you feel it on the rear a little bit more. farm truck. Alright, so what I do, 
I can do it. I can stand on the pegs. I've gotten into this habit whenever I'm on a trip of uh, standing on the pegs when I cross over a bridge just to take a look at the river, just to stretch out. Thank you. And I can do that on this bike. Yay! Thank you, farm tractor. Thank you, hey man. Yeah, I like this. I mean, you get on this thing and it does make a nice sound. Really low. Like a baritone. And when you start it, it really does shake. It's pretty crazy. RPM is supposed to be 5,500, I believe. That's nice. Oh, that was a big one. Oh, that was the lip on a bridge. So this isn't a, uh, this isn't a GS, breaking news. Turn signal indicators on the display. It just shows you that they're activated. It doesn't show you left or right. It just blinks. Let's see if they're auto canceling. They do not appear to be auto cancel. Oh, they are. They are auto canceling people breaking news and it's interesting because the blinking light appeared in the gray center part of the of the instrument of the sole instrument cluster you can even call it a cluster but when it's not blinking it's invisible so it kind of like shines through which is neat. Now, from where I'm sitting, I could see the words Berlin built. Two places. One here on the uh, Clutch Reservoir and two on the, uh, I don't want to say it, the controls. I don't want to say it, the dashboard. It's just the single display. So again, the exhaust noise, it's got a nice throaty sound when you're on it, but when, you, when you're not, it's not, I mean, you're not scaring little kids. You're not waking the neighbors with this thing. Now, in terms of fore aft, there is some movability on the seat. Here, I'm right up to the tank. If you're shorter, you might be closer here. If you're taller, you might be back here. So your arms have more place to reach and your legs have a little bit more to move. So I'm on a stretch of pavement that's been uh, cut open. Looks like to lay some utilities, some lines or something like that. It's handling it pretty well. It undulates and whatnot, but it doesn't... Uh, I'm not getting hard hits or anything. Manhole, raised manhole cover. Felt that one. Oh, I was going 
gotta go to the park. That's what I was gonna do. I was gonna go to the park and get some shots. Now, there's a lot of chrome here. A lot of chrome. More chrome than I'm comfortable with, to be honest with you. So, when it comes... When it comes to ownership, uh, this is the kind of bike you you gotta pack some rags, right? You gotta pack some rags because you want this thing to look nice. Should I go to the park now? <sighs> While it's clean, I'll grab some shots now. I'm still not used to its handling. Now it's, and then I'm not, that's not a criticism of the bike. It's uh, more just like whenever you get an, on a new bike, you, there's a learning curve, right? Just figuring out how it all comes together, getting to a comfort level. I mean, it, that doubles when you're like on one of the few R18s in the wild, right? And you, the last thing you want to do is bin it. So the menu only goes one way, even though this, uh, this rocker goes up and down, only the top one, as you're cycling through the different options, only the top one is active. So it cycles you through. Getting 41 miles to the gallon. 5.30. Let me grab some shots. Well, we still got some sun. Sounds nice. Testing them out. All right. Two finger is all right. Again, this bike had two miles when I uh, got it, so nothing is bedded in. So give it some time, perhaps. But like three fingers were much better than two fingers. This is not a two finger breaker. Neither was the. Um, just as a point of comparison, the gold wing I was on was was okay with two, but it was clearly better with three. Likewise with this bike. There's likewise with this bike. Man, it is just weird to look down and see those cylinders. Holy cow. I could see how attack on this bike is kind of unnecessary. I mean, it's nice to know the number, but do you really need to know? The motor gives you plenty of feel. 
you could ride it by feel, right? All right, so, I mean, I've been recording for quite a while now. I don't know if you're still, anyone's still listening. I'm gonna have to edit this down a little bit. Ah, and that did all right. Better than I thought it would. But uh, this is the first ride. 